Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheel is off the ground. After that, we're going to go ahead and remove the center cover. You're going to find a little tab in here that you can carefully get in between and gently pry without damaging the wheel. Go ahead and pull that off of there, give it a quick inspection, set that aside. After that, you're going to continue on by removing all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts. Let's remove the wheel. Now that the wheel's off of there, we have a nice clear view of our brakes. The area that we want to pay attention to first is the caliper. We're going to come right inside this area with a small pry bar and carefully try to push this piston in. I'm just going to come in between the caliper and the rotor itself and we'll gently pry. Now once that's pushed in enough that you can move this around, we can continue on by removing our two 10 millimeter slider pins. All right, so now that we have that pushed back, let's move along to our two 10 millimeter slider bolts. Leave that in there just a couple threads. We'll grab these bolts. It's a good idea to give them a quick inspection. You want to make sure the threaded area is still in good condition. These look fine, so I'll set them aside. Let's grab onto that caliper. We're going to carefully remove it from the knuckle area. Just grab onto it. You're going to lift up on the lower aspect and kind of pivot away. Now it's time to remove the rotor. Carefully grab onto it, give it a little wiggle, and pull it off of here. I like to give them a quick inspection. Set it aside. Let's make our way right here. We're going to go ahead and remove this bracket for our emergency brake cable. We'll use a 10 millimeter for that. Now we can start removing the emergency brake shoes. To do this, we're going to make our way right along the bottom. Looking at this area, you can see the adjuster cog. I'm just going to use a long flat screwdriver. Come in between the shoe and the backing plate. And now I'm going to press it up against the inside of the axle there. You can see that I can pull on this with a little bit of leverage. And now I can slide the adjuster right out of there. There's our adjuster. Go ahead and give that a quick inspection. We'll set that aside. Next, we can move along to the spring right here. You can see that it hooks in on the rearward shoe and you can see that it hooks in on the forward shoe. We're going to go ahead and take it right off of those shoes. To do this, typically I just use some long nose pliers. I'll grab onto this, give it a little tug, and try to pull it out of the shoe. There we are. Now we can grab onto the shoe, and we're going to pay attention to the mounting points. Now for these, there's a little tab that you're essentially going to press in straight, and then if you were to look right where my index finger is, you can see a tip of a pin. That pin goes all the way through the shoe and through the other side of the backing plate. To remove these, I'm going to carefully get behind the shoe and then try to grab onto the outer aspect of that clip. Now once I've grabbed onto it, I can carefully squeeze, and now we're going to grab onto the end of that pin. Let's go ahead and twist that so it lines up with the hole. Once it's lined up, you should be able to release the clip and it should want to slide right out of there. Once you have it slid out of there, you can grab onto the shoe. We're just going to give it a little twist like this. We'll try to remove that clip. Watch your fingers for any pinch points. There's the clip. Release that. Do the same thing on the other shoe. For this one, I'm going to use a screwdriver. I'll go ahead and get in between the hub and the clip, gently pry, and then we'll grab the pin tip. We'll twist it until it's in position to remove it.
Now let's go ahead and grab onto the shoe. We're just going to lift it up enough that we can gain access to our upper spring. For this, you can either use some cutters and carefully grab onto it, or you can just use some long nose pliers. Once the spring's off of there, carefully remove your shoe. You're going to want to give it an inspection. We'll set that aside. Let's grab onto the other side. We're going to pull this out with the spring. Let's go ahead and remove that. Set all that aside. Let's get the pins out of here. Shouldn't look like that. Let's get the other pin out of here as well. Okay, we're getting to the point that we're gonna put on our emergency brake shoes. Before you do, you wanna add a little bit of lubricant along all of these raised areas on the backing plate. You're gonna find three of them along the forward side, three along the rearward side, essentially in the same positions. After we lubricate those, we're also gonna lubricate the areas up along the knuckle where the shoes are gonna sit. When you do this, you wanna use high temperature caliper grease, and you also wanna make sure you don't put on too much because we don't want it to get on the shoes. Now once you've lubricated the backing plate, let's take care of the emergency brake actuator. That's these two rods right here. You want to make sure you don't have any debris on it. I'm just going to go ahead and clean it down. Turn it over. Make sure you clean the other side as well. Now once you've gotten the rust buildup off of there, we can continue on by putting it in through the back of the backing plate and then bringing it out through the front, through this hole right here. Once you have those sanded down, let's continue on with a little bit more of that high temperature caliper grease. We're going to lubricate the back side of this boot right here, especially if you can get in between the top area of the boot and the bottom area, right in the center. It's just a little bit of lubricant here. Now we can put those two pieces together and we'll slide them right on through the backing plate. Let's get this lined up. See if we can slide it right on through. There we are. Now you can see it coming through the front. Now once you have it through there, you wanna make sure that you have the two little pitons lined up. You can tell that the rearward one has the little bubble that comes out and then the forward one has a notch that goes in. They need to fit together perfectly. Now once you have that in there, let's continue on with the emergency brake cable. You're going to have to take this and put it up and over the control arm. After that, put your bracket in place, start the bolt in, and tighten it up. Make sure that's nice and secure so it can't hang down and potentially get caught on anything while you're driving. Now let's get the shoes in. Make sure you have them in the proper orientation. Let's take our upper spring. We're going to put it right into the upper hole. Now we can go ahead and take the spring and we're going to slide it down underneath the knuckle in between the area where the bearing and the knuckle meet. Once you have that slid in there, we're going to continue on putting on the forward shoe as well. Now what you're going to find is you have to actually grab onto the spring. You're going to stretch the spring. So keep in mind it's going to be under a little bit of pressure. And then you're going to slide it into the same hole on the forward shoe. After you have it in there, make sure you set it inside the groove. I'm going to use some cutters to grab onto the spring easiest. You just want to be careful not to go ahead and cut the spring in any way. If you try to use pliers, typically they slip a little bit. When I grab onto the spring, I'm going to use the hub as a leverage point and carefully pull.
Go ahead and take that shoe. We're gonna try to put the spring into its corresponding hole. Double check to make sure it's inserted in the shoe on both sides. The next thing that I like to do is just try to hold the shoe up against the backing plate. You could do that several different ways, but for me, I'm just gonna use a pry bar in between the shoe and the hub itself. What you also wanna pay attention to is the hole for your mounting pin. We're gonna take that and put it through the back side of the backing plate, and then we can take our locking clip and put it in position and lock it down. Now, since it's gonna be hard to see while it's inside the vehicle, I'm gonna show you out in the open. We're gonna come through the backing plate. It's gonna come through the shoe, make its way through this larger hole, and then it needs to line up perfectly with the corresponding hole in the front. If you have it twisted too much, it's not gonna go ahead and line up. So once you have it lined up perfectly, you can go ahead and twist this, and then you latch it in just like that. That's in its fully locked position, and it's in the safe position. With that said, let's go ahead and put it through the backing plate. To get the forward pin in, it's going to be easiest using a magnet. Let's take this and we'll put it in position through the back of the backing plate. Let's get that clip in there. Next we're going to compress this so we can slide the pin through it. We'll go ahead and lock it in. Time for the adjuster. Add some lubricant. Go ahead and turn that all the way up. Now we can take our lower spring and we're going to put it into the two lower holes on each of the shoes. I'm going to stretch it up to the other shoe. Slide it right in there. Now it's time for the adjuster. Pay attention to the slots of the adjuster and make sure it lines up with the corresponding slots on the shoes. You might find that the cog of the adjuster hits up against the spring. That's okay. We're going to have to separate the shoes a little bit to get this in here. Once you feel as though you have it in there, just double check. It needs to be sitting in the shoe properly. You don't want it to fall out while you're driving down the road. We'll get the pin through there, take our other clip, put it in position. Let's continue on by applying some copper never seize to our hub mating surface. Double check to make sure you didn't get any on your emergency brake shoes. Now it's time to install our rotor. Just carefully slide it right on over those emergency brake shoes. If it feels like it's binding, trying to go on, you need to go ahead and take it right back off. You're going to double check the emergency brake shoes to make sure they're sitting properly and the emergency brake is not in the on position. Let's take that caliper and we'll slide it right on over. You want to pay attention to the top of each of the pads. We want to make sure that the bracket slides in. If it feels like the caliper doesn't want to go on, more than likely it's due to your slider pin. You just want to carefully push that towards the inboard aspect of the vehicle. 
After that, let's take our two caliper slider bolts. We'll get those into position. Now you want to start them both in. Bottom them out. Now we can torque each of them to 24 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and get the wheel up on here. Start on all of your lug nuts, bottom them out. We'll get the wheel back on the ground and then we'll torque each of them to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel back on the ground, let's torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Of course, if you had a center cover, go ahead and put it on now. Looking at the back, you can see the areas where all the lug nuts need to fit into. Make sure it's secure. Okay friends, we got one side of the truck done. Now of course you're gonna wanna make sure that you do the exact same thing on the other side. After that, go ahead and test your emergency brake. You wanna make sure that it holds the vehicle while you have the vehicle running in drive with your foot off the brake. Assuming that's good, take it for a road test, make sure you don't hear any funny noises. Thank you for watching.